Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zaire, and I'm joined by my white rabbit, Rich Stambolian. Ooh, how cool is that? You're the white rabbit. And the, uh, you know what? Big reveal, guys. Smack, I'm going to be on SmackDown on Friday. I'm the, I'm the, you know, that's me. I'm the white rabbit. You know, how disappointed would people be if it is Bad Bunny? I don't think people would be disappointed, dude. I think they'd be really happy about it. That guy is wildly popular. I, it could, no, I think I think it has to be Brad. We're going to talk about that, obviously. We're going to talk tons about that. But, Rich, yes. uh, tomorrow we're going to Arthur Ashe. We're going to AEW. Very excited for this. Uh, I know that you have your tickets. I got mine. Jess is going too. Bob is going to be there. Oh, uh, yeah. Jess's cousin Tommy's coming. He's wrestling, coming. right? Bob is wrestling. Can you imagine if he just rushes the ring? Hey, guys. Singlet? Takes off singlet. his clothes, singlet. He's been training for years. <laughs> you know what? Don't tempt him. He'll do it. Uh, but where do you want to start, Rich? Uh, you know, a lot of moving parts in pro wrestling. Uh, yes, Andrew. Uh, you know what? Let's ooh, let's let's save the AEW stuff for the end because since okay. we're going to the show tomorrow, that's going to be the most exciting part. Uh, and other big news this week, which I think is pretty cool. I think a lot of people thought it was cool. Survivor Series will feature a men's and women's War Games match this year. Uh, but Triple H did say it will not be Raw versus SmackDown. I yeah. think it should be. You think so? I think it. I should. I think they should have three. I think they should have the separate ones and then one Raw versus SmackDown one. Well, they're doing two, right? They're doing the men's and the women's. Mm -hmm. I would imagine the bloodline is involved in one of them, right? That'd be dope. You do the bloodline versus Drew and whatever, or or, uh, or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe they don't do that. I I'm very interested about it because Triple H has wanted War Games since 2002. This is something that he pitched to WWE multiple times. He's a very he's a big fan of the concept of the match. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are. Um, you know, the, the original concept of War Games, Vince McMahon did not like a lot of things about it, like the, the cell being so low. Right. right? It, was, right. it was a shorter cage. So it wasn't this grand thing. You were just locked in a cage. Um, you know, we saw success in, in NXT. This is obviously a major, major part of this is the partnerships with Mattel and all the toys they're going to be able to sell. This is the first time that they're going to have a WWE War Games cage, right, for sale. They had the NXT one, obviously, in the past. But this is a big, uh, you know, all these things that they do now, anything that's gimmick, like that shark cage. Remember when they did the shark cage match years ago? With Enzo? Paul Ellering? No, Paul Ell Ellering. Oh, yeah, 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 the NXT one. Yeah, the whole purpose was to sell the toy. Braun Strowman breaking that ambulance and, like, throwing it over. The whole purpose was to sell the toy. Well, the Ambrose Asylum match too, right? Like they came out with that like immediately. Didn't they? Yeah, they did. They had like a potted plant mm -hmm. in those stupid, that Ambrose Asylum match. Really dumb. Listen, you, you can't blame them for doing the toy stuff. I think with this one, it's good. It's like, this is Triple H. Like this is the heat. Triple H is in like tantric wrestling booking mode right now. <laughs> this is his slow burn where he's like, oh yeah, you know what I'm going to do next? What are you going to do? Oh, War Games. We're on SmackDown. You know, like, so you never know what's going to come. I think, I think you're going to get War Games. I think the White Rabbit stuff is going to pay off. It's going to be fun. I think on one end, you're going to get the Bloodline versus, let's, how about this? Jake Paul, um, Drew, KO, Gargano, and somebody else. Yeah, I, they could do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these options. Monday Night Raw last night, Bobby Lashley beat Seth Rollins to retain the U.S. Championship. They went along with this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did he always come out with the toms in the beginning, Bobby Lashley? Like, and then it went into his music, or was that a relatively new thing? MG, is that new? I fell off his chair, man. He doesn't. I'm know. here. No, no, I'm <laughs> here. He's that thing. Yeah, I was muted. Uh, it's been it's been about a month, a couple months now. Okay. Okay. Kevin Owens beat Austin Theory. I'm gonna go down this fast because there's a lot to talk about the details the brawling yeah. brutes defeated the street profits Stop. all right it's, yeah, it's different name. but you know like why not why not why is pete dunn still butch like obviously he's not wrestling like butch he doesn't look like butch anymore just call mm -hmm. him pete dunn everybody knows his name he was already there i think you should get rid of that barking shit that he does oh my god <laughs> it's yeah silly. he barks it's very silly, I think. Oh. I think it's too silly. Uh, whatever. You know, like, uh, I think this dude should be in the U.S. title picture at this yeah, point. I'm cool with that, for sure.
Judgment Day beat Rey Mysterio and Matt Riddle. Seth Rollins attacked Riddle during the match. This leads to a backstage brawl where Rollins accepts Riddle's challenge for another match. It'll be a fight pit at Extreme Rules. Great. Oh, you know what? I'm done with this feud. Me too. I, I think they've, they've, this is it. I'm glad that it's over after this. I, I think it, yeah. Go, go ahead, Rich. I was going to say, I was, I'm agreeing with you 100%. I think Thank after you. this, it's no, no mas, please. Fucking end it. No mas. Uh, Miz TV with the Miz and Tommaso Ciampa. Dexter Loomis cut a hole in the mat and tried to abduct them both. All right. Great. And Bailey with uh, with Dakota Kai and EO Sky defeated Alexa Bliss. Now, the lights went out during that match, right? Did they? Yes. Okay. I, I believe they did. Yeah. So, that, so they, they're, they're hinting at something. With the red tinge. With a little yeah. red tinge. So yes. Yeah. So... I mean, listen, to me, this is all, this is Bray. Uh, but, you know, I'd be shocked. I'd be surprised if it was somebody else. Well, Karen Cross used to come out to that song during Lucha Underground, right? Yes, but I, I cannot see them doing this for him. Because he's already in the program. You've introduced him already. These are all, like, right. introductory things that they're doing. Listen, very WWE-like, right? This is this is out of Hunter's playbook. This is out of WWE's playbook. Tease it, tease it. They love the spooky stuff. Uh, a lot of people are turned off by the spooky stuff. They don't want any more spooky stuff in WWE. I want all the spooky. I Same want here. Skeleton I... Men. I want Skeleton yep. Man. I want I want vampires. I want Dracules. I want mummies. I think everything is cool apart from when they do zombie stuff like the ecw zombie you can't um, it, but you know what though they, they they did zombie undertaker was a zombie right different kind of zombie though but he was an undead yeah. right like the ecw zombie was like like a george romero zombie yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was that guy those guys are idiots you know i i have hmm. to tell you like i don't know why anybody was ever afraid of those idiot zombies you mean in the movies? Yeah, like the original zombies, like the Walking Dead zombies. You know, I mean, that's, that's pretty terrifying. Imagine if you walked outside and you saw like a hundred reanimated dead people outside. Dude, I your, walk. Your place. I get out of Penn Station every day. I see them. Well, <laughs> that is that is <laughs> daily. True. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that is true. There is a crisis in New York. Yeah, do you know where they all are? <laughs> they're not Eighth Avenue. Not, they're on. Yeah, they're on. They're on uh, sixth, uh, seventh to Eighth Avenue in in uh yeah. by in thirty fourth. That's where all the yeah. zombies are. Every Terrifying. one of those me, Walking Deads are there now. Let me tell you something. I did a gig at the height of uh, the 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 Pan Pan yeah. a couple of years ago, right? And it was a very safe gig. The building was right across the street from Penn Station on 8th Avenue, the 8th Avenue entrance. I was on maybe the 10th floor. And you could see from the window just the roamers stalking <laughs> that corner. Yeah. And I was with like the, you know, like my contact. And I'm like, wait, like it was it was a very slow shoot because everybody had to be safe. But we're looking out the window like, yo, this is gnarly, dude. Like the streets are empty and all there are these like roamers, roamers in like yeah. shambly, shambly outfits. It, it's a shame. Nuts. It really is. It, it, it's something. It, listen, red tape. Yeah. They don't. They, you can't you can't solve any of these problems. Right. Yeah. So uh, the white, the, 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 the I, I'm cool with Bray being spooky. I, I don't know. A lot of people don't like yes. it. I, I'm into it. You know what? I, I'm, I'm fine with the Bray Wyatt gimmick. I get the purpose. Yeah, is it difficult to wrestle him? Yeah, a hundred percent, it's difficult. But it was difficult for the Undertaker too. Right? The same criticism. You care? How do you? How do you beat? How do you convincingly wrestle this guy? That's an undead, right? You're taking yourself out of it. You're putting yourself back in there. But I thought Bray, you know, unfortunately for him, he, whatever was going on at the end of that run was happening, and it didn't go yeah. well. But they've had they have a great opportunity with him, and people. Just an attraction, guys. You don't need to make him the number one guy in the company. Make him an attraction. Keep him far away from the title. So here's the thing. I want to I want to piggyback on what you just said there. People found it difficult to wrestle Bray, right? Do you think that's because everybody is so has that WWE system so yeah. ingrained that they couldn't deal with like just whatever this guy was doing? I could tell you. I, I've never heard a. I'll tell you off the air some of the stuff because some of the stuff is like mean stuff. Like I don't, I don't, and again, I don't ever report anything like that. that like the wrestlers say, or like I yeah, hear yeah, that yeah. the wrestlers said because it, it it's so very biased, right? Everybody's opinion there. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that you know Vince had issues with his performance. Vince had a lot of issues with Bray for I don't know. Maybe backstage he was difficult to work with. I don't know anything about working with Bray. 
I don't want to say that he was difficult or not, but I know that Vince had stuff in his mind, and that was the majority of the problem here. And, you know, Vince doesn't see it, or Vince gets cold, or would get cold on you, you were done. You know what's interesting, though? And, and I was thinking about this the other day, we, when I was talking about this on, on Observer Live. How many guys would have had a great run if Vince didn't get fed up too early? Ugh. Right, because During... there has to be a lot of those guys where, like Vince, like he just got tired. During what era? Because you could argue that he made for a good chunk of time he made the right decisions. Vince, right? yeah. I mean, you know what though? I for, we're, let's not. We're not talking about him personally, right? Not no. talking personally with decision making. Uh, we're talking business wise. You know, you you. You have a 40-year run. You're going to have mm -hmm. some really terrible ideas. You're going to have terrible ideas. But, you know, immediately the first thing that I thought of was how he never pulled the trigger on Cesaro. I, I don't think he ever would have. You know what I mean? I no, feel but, like that. But, listen, Vince's mentality, right? Yeah. Who, who's his world champion right now? Uh, Roman Reigns. Okay, does Cesaro look like Roman? No. No way. But, you know what? Cesaro would have if if Vince booked for the smart fans, Cesaro would have been a champ in that company. If 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 they booked for the smart fans, Cesaro would have been champion. Uh, AJ would have had more runs. Danielson would have had more runs. Punk would have been the number one guy for a long time. Uh, but he was. He held that belt you know, for like hey, what four hundred thirty. William days? Regal could have been given the title. That is true. Right. These are all interesting. But I, I think the biggest problem here was the Vince McMahon hurdle of him getting tired or bored or something bothers him about what you did. And that's mm -hmm. it. It's over for you. There has to be a laundry list of guys like that. You know, like, I, and I'm, yeah, I, I yeah. don't know why I can't think of, you know what, a chat room, you guys could help. There's, there's about a hundred and so people in the chat. They could, they could figure this out with us. Is there anybody that comes to mind? Like from like, think of uh, the 2000s, early 2000s. Oh, I would go back. For, to Luger. Okay, Lex Luger. Great yeah. example. You know what? Yeah. Luger. Luger. T today we're doing a loose show, guys. All right? It's a little loose today. Loosey goosey, baby. By the way, I had a guy make a comment about my shirt. What, like This where, morning. Where? Okay, I took the kids to school. I'm going to get back to my Vince McMahon comment. I, I need to tell okay. you this. Uh, by the way, this is how Rich and I like. This is a normal conversation with us, right? I'm walking the kids to school, right? I, mm. I drop them off. I guess I don't know if he was a dad or like he was like an uncle. Like he was, he had a kid there, right? <laughs> or, or a or a lurker. Or a he was doing this. He was doing this on the gates, looking at the Ooh. Kids. Uh, oh. So the guy comes over. To, he's like, he's like, I got to tell you, man. He goes, those guys, they're the ones that did it in the Ukraine. You know that, right? What? And I'm like, I'm like, huh? Oh. And I, dude, I and my shirt was kind like. It was open, you know? So you see New World Order. So he's like, he's like, those guys, they're the ones that are doing all this. The Russian stuff, the Ukraine, the pandemic. It's all them. And I'm like, it's, you know, and I look down and I realize I'm wearing the NWO shirt. And I'm like, I'm wondering, he was so deadpan when he said it. I was like, oh, he has to be fucking with me. Doesn't that make you upset? So I'm like, I'm like, oh, no, it's a wrestling thing. Right. I'm like, it's a wrestling thing. He's like, he's like, what? Who? No, 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 not not wrestling. What, what's happening in the Ukraine? I'm like, dude, no, this is a fucking narc, I'm like, dude. I'm like, this, this is a wrestling <laughs> shirt. I'm like, this is nothing to do with politics or the Ukraine. He's like, he's like oh, 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 uh, you know, it's still true, though. Oh, I just fucking walked boy. away. I walked away. This is not a conversation I want to have at 805 in the morning, guys. Listen, there's folks like that everywhere. The conspiracy theorists that love, you know what I hear all the time? This is, I've heard this quote from several people over the last few weeks. I know what really happened. I look at videos on YouTube. I look at videos on YouTube. Guess what? Like, we're on YouTube. We are on YouTube. And you know what? Don't believe a goddamn word we're saying. Nothing is real here. I, I actually, I had a great joke, but I'm going to, I'm going to save it for off the air. Save for, I'm, I'm taking notes of stuff for you to tell me off the air. Okay. You need to, t I, I need to tell you about the exposure joke. Like, ex I have like a, a great exposing themselves. Just, like just remind me off the air. You know what? You guys will never hear this joke. It's only for uh, me and Rich. I'm taking these notes. Bray Wyatt behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exposure uh, joke. Exposure joke. Yeah. You're going to forget. I'm going to ask you later. I'm going to forget it. Like, I'm going to have no idea what you're saying. Uh, so so back to back to Vince, right? Like, yeah, yeah. 
who else? Luger for sure. I think Luger was a mistake. I think Luger in like the 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 pantheon of WWE lore mm -hmm. would should have been world champion. I think with Luger, they for him, they really did as much as they could for the guy. And for some reason it didn't work and Vince saw that, right? I don't, well, he didn't like it. He didn't trust them. That was the problem. He didn't trust them. He thought he was he was going to take off, and he did. He left. Well, plus you're also going from Hogan to Luger, which listen, no offense to Luger, a little bit of a step down. Yeah, it is. It is a generic. It is a generic uh, all American boy thing, right? Yeah, that big body slam on Yoko. I mean, that was huge. I remember sitting on awesome. TV watching that on Fox Five. Big Same deal. here. What a moment. You know, yeah. By the way, the chat room, apparently Kyle, our buddy Kyle. Like Kyle Kyle? Yeah. Or Kyle Masters. No, no, no. Kyle Kyle. Kyle Kyle is, has like multiple accounts because all he keeps writing, writing is Raven in the chat room. A lot of people think <laughs> Raven was one that Vince never got. I would have loved Burners. to see like the Raven gift. I know. Uh, dude, can I tell you what happened at that party where he got all weird about his crush on Raven and he started trying to convince my wife that Raven is a very good looking guy. And he's like ultimately cool. And he was sure, just young pulling, up, pulling up pictures of Raven. I swear to God, you could ask Kyle this. This is 100% legitimate. For about an hour, he just kept like like going gaga over uh, Raven. And he was like, look how cool he looks. Look at his hair. Look how he's sitting. And Jess is like, yeah, he's on my type. And he's like, but he's mine. <laughs> can, I tell you a quick, can I tell you a quick Raven story? Yeah, give me one. I don't think I've ever really told anybody this. Maybe like uh -oh. two people know this story. Yeah. Okay. Years ago. I, this is like before our wrestling, but this is like in the two, early 2000s, right? Mid, early, mid 2000s. Before we started doing the show, I wrote a weird indie thing that was like a horror movie, right? I was like, I'm going to get Raven in this thing. You want a Raven I, in the horror film? I ended up getting in touch with him. And you know what? He took my phone call. Very sweet guy. We set it up over email. I managed to talk to him for a good like four minutes smart guy very nice very yeah but then but then when it came to money it was the carniest conversation on the planet and oh, i'll leave yeah, it at that okay. i will leave it at that he didn't he didn't say i don't want to do your movie no he was into it but it was very much like no this is what i need and i was like ah, you know i'm in my 20s i'm like yeah ah, you know hey, but yeah that's my story i'll tell that's you the rest rib. of it i'll tell you all the rest right. of it later. all right see you save that i'm gonna write that in my notes more. What is that, MJ? Who was that? I got a Who couple guys for you. Okay, it's, give me a couple guys. Yeah. Um, Nathan Jones. I'm going mid 2000s. Okay, Nathan Jones. Okay. And Matt Morgan's another one. You know what? Wow. Matt Morgan is an interesting one. Uh, you yeah. know who else I was a big fan of? Chronic. I was a okay. huge fan of Chronic. I thought Chronic was awesome. Wasn't uh, one of the other big dudes at that time supposed to be like a big? Okay, so all right, I got a couple. Right. Okay. Give me Nathan Jones. Yeah. Right. Wasn't he the, supposed to be like the Colossus of Bago Road or some shit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there was another big dude that showed up and they got rid of him. Um, I want to throw Ryback in there. Right. You know what? Ryback could be. Yeah, for sure. Ryback. I, I would definitely add Ryback. to. That. Uh, am I thinking of the right guy? Lance Cade. Garrison Cade. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, he uh, was supposed to be. He, remember that HBK thing? He was, he was, uh, he was, he was, uh, Sean's student, and they, he was doing like this HBK thing where he would do the super kick. Yes. Um, Ahmed Johnson, that's a good Ahmed, one from the Llama Ahmed, Ahmed was a dude. I loved Ahmed. I was a mm. big Ahmed Johnson fan. How could you not be? Amen. He's so, he's, he's impressive looking. He's gigantic. Yeah. I think when, you know what? I'm going to throw Braun Strowman in there. Braun is a good one. Yeah, Vince got tired of him. Ron's a good example because, like, I think, I think, and there's this, and a group, please, like, like, think about this. I think there's a certain mentality with Vince, right? Where he's like, you've worked hard enough to get to this position. I'm putting a lot of faith and investment into you. Now it's time for you to flip that switch and turn it up, right? I don't think Braun ever did that. And that probably frustrated everybody. There's a ton in the, in the 80s. You know, you talk about like guys to become your world champion. DiBiase, perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 Piper, Paul Orndorff. But I think those guys were told, "Hey, here's a shit ton of money. 
you're going to be working on top. You're making you're Hogan. Win. Yeah, you're you making know, you're Hogan. making Hogan, and you guys are going to have runs, and Hogan's like Hogan's basically paying all your bills. Yeah, at, at this point, you know. Listen, I, I think like Nathan Jones, like I, I don't think he would have worked for Vince, right? Like Sid, great example. Sid is a mm. great example of a guy that could have been the guy, but he just didn't want to do it. Listen, yeah. I get that. Like sometimes you wonder. Like I, I had this discussion with someone over there a couple months ago. Mm. And I was like, you know, like, it's funny, like, why some people just never get that push and there's fan favorites. And the, and the answer was such a simple answer. He's like, listen, it, it really comes down to sometimes how you present yourself in the back, how hungry you are at it. Not everybody that that is there wants to be the world champion or wants to put in the work, you know, being Roman Reigns or being like the Miz. Like, that is a lot of work. The now, Miz, being the Miz is a ton of work of all the press and media he has to do. Most of those guys don't want to do any of that. But he's good at it. He's great at it. Yeah, that's a different type of person to do it. Very different type of person. We have flipped our opinion on The Miz in the last five years. I know. Isn't that amazing? (laughs) So let me ask you something. And I've never asked this to you before. And, you know, we talk about kayfabe sometimes on the show. Obviously, it's a wrestling show, right? Yeah. Do you think the most kayfabe line in wrestling is if you're not here for the belt, then what are you here for? Or something akin to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because... Because like, as if every, I feel like if everybody had that aggressive mentality, it would be a, a lot different, right? A hundred percent. But you know what's really funny? Uh, uh, a wrestler said this to me. They said the biggest work in wrestling is convincing the talent that they're marks if they want to have the belt. Interesting. Because it gives you an advantage. Like you, you, it's like a weird thing where like you don't want to seem like you want the belt. You don't want to be a mark for the belt. The belt is not right. the thing that defines you. Your ability defines you, right? But uh, this person was telling me, he's like, yeah, you say it enough, then nobody's going to want the belt. So when you step up, it's going to look really good. You know, that's kind of funny, too. Yeah, right? Again, I, th- I think it's that little, like, internal flipping of the switch. You know, let's go back to Braun Strowman for a second, right? Like, the guy had everything apart from Mike skills. Big attraction. Massive. Choo-choo nonsense. It could destroy an ambulance. True, true. No, nobody's destroyed an ambulance better than Braun Strowman, right? Let's, let's get that out of the way. <laughs> He's the best at it. <laughs> He's the best at it. So when if he flipped that switch of like, you know what? I'm on top. Let me show people my charm, you know? And I think it took a few years, but you got that from Roman, right? Like this yeah. Roman is unbelievable. No, he really is, dude. Uh, that press conference, great example. Like... Uh, I, I people have to view him without that disdain that he was shoved down your throats because he's not yeah. shoved down your throats. He legitimately uh, is the man in pro wrestling, right? Like they've they finally did it. They really wanted mm-hmm. this guy to be the guy. They were trying from day one, getting rejected, and who knew all he had to do was just be given carte blanche or not carte blanche, but give, give be given the comfort of of being a bad guy, right? Because when that turn happens, it's going to be the biggest turn the company's seen in years. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, you know, you got Roman Reigns. He's doing this press conference. Would, 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 look, no knock at Cesaro. I absolutely adore him as a wrestler. I love his work. Mm-hmm. I love everything he does. But the argument of Cesaro should be WWE, should have been WWE champion, or Malachi Black should have been, you know, Rusev could, should have been world champion. Actually, I would love to see R- Rusev doing a press conference with Logan Paul. That actually, that would be amazing. Like to see. But like, like in character? In character, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Redeemer <laughs> talking to Logan Paul uh, in a press conference and just rant, like ranting. But that press conference is fascinating, okay? And, and I'm going to explain to you why. There was no wrestling media there. It was all boxing yeah. media because they held yeah. it on the weekend of the Canelo fight. They tr- took it very serious. Yes. Roman was, I mean, just an utter star uh, in every way. This guy, he is solidified as the guy, and it's... You know, will he surpass John Cena level? That's a good question. Very good question. Can uh, he or will he? Has he? I think in a certain regard he has because I think he appeals to a wider audience than Cena did. Much wider you know and I mean? much and it's a, and he's a cooler character. Way cooler guy. I also think I'm going to go back to the Rusev thing. He 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 would sit there and he would go, "I never trust anybody who has two first names," and that would be the press conference. That would be, that's Again, a great Lo- press conference. Logan Paul. Uh, yeah, dude. Like, ro- like we've been to live shows and there are people in the crowd that are like hysterical for Roman. I'm not saying it's like Beatles mania or you know when when dude, the lady the saw Elvis wiggling his hips. No, but, I mean, yeah, we were at the Garden. Okay, Rich and I are at the Garden. There's this kid in front of us. And the whole family, right? The mom is there. The mom mm. was fanning herself. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Right, the yeah. kid is losing his mind. The dad is losing. The mom is fanning herself. <laughs> you know, uh, there's only a couple of people in in wrestling that could do that, and I think Roman is, has transcended into that character, I, and and that's fantastic. Right. That's great. It's going to well, be such to, a big deal when he's beat. We also have to take out a little bit of our like adult cynicism that seeps in because you know if you are watching wrestling with your kids at home and then all of a sudden you get these tickets <clears throat> and you're a hundred feet away from the person that you love on TV. Oh yeah. You're going to, you're going to freak the F out. Yeah, because, but those people are not sitting here and talking about wrestling six hours a week. You know, they're right. not, they're not, right, right, they're, right. Not, they're not reading, uh, about what's happening. They, they, they go because they enjoy watching it on TV and that's, that's the depth of what they do. These are TV stars. These are TV stars and they are. You know, we view it in a very weird way. Oh, we view wrestling in the way that Vince McMahon never wanted anybody to watch wrestling. Right? <laughs> look at my millionaires fight each look other. At my, ah, look at my millionaires fight each other. Look at my rich boys. Oh, look at them go. <laughs> but he, he wanted it to be just a TV show. You turn it on, you love it, and you yeah. say, man, I got to watch next week. You know, the internet yeah. ruined it. These dirt sheets. These dirt sheets. <laughs> <laughs> These dirt sheets ruined it. These dirty uh, sheets. Yeah. Dirty Let's sheets. See. All right, what else uh, do we have here? I don't even know where we were. we're. We're doing a loose show, guys. We're having fun today. So I think we got the we got the WWE stuff out of the way. Oh, the, the press conference. So did you watch all the press conference? Oh, I, well, you know what? I watched most of it, and um, I did like the shove that Roman did to Logan Paul. Yeah, very good. Uh, Roman Logan Paul set to be the main event of Crown Jewel November 5th in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The press conference was held in Vegas, as we said. Uh, they wanted to take advantage of all the sports media that was in town, Triple G and Alvarez. You know, this, uh, to me, this this is Nick Khan, right? This is a Nick Khan thing. Uh, yeah, the realism sure. and the boxing crossover and more of the UFC stuff. That has all been Nick and his relationship with all these different, you know, uh, different types of uh, combat sports, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Logan Paul could do. You know, a lot of people saying, is it fair is Logan taking a spot that belongs to someone else? Hey, listen, it's not a real sport. <laughs> you know? Right. Is and Logan it's in Saudi Paul Arabia. This, what? Is he going to be over in Saudi Arabia? Well, he does have a big following. Uh, he yeah. has a tremendous following. Uh, he is a celebrity. Not, I mean, listen, we're, we're 38-year-old men, right? We're, sure. I'm not watching Logan Paul content on YouTube. I'm not no. watching Jake Paul content on YouTube regularly. No. I mean, I watch it when my buddy Tim was on. You know, I watch it when yeah. uh, 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 Hunter was on. But I, I'm not. I, I don't sit there and seek it out. It doesn't. It's not my demo. It's not for me. It's for 20 year olds. It's for teenagers. And guess what number that they need to pump up is those teenage numbers and those there's uh, the the 20 year olds. They need the hook. They need to hook the, those twenty year olds back in. Now, will will is Logan Paul? Will Logan Paul fans walk, like stick around? I don't know, but you know, you look at you look at data analysis, uh, and you think to yourself, and WWE does this. It's not like they're not just like somebody's not suggesting mm -hmm. Logan Paul. They're looking at metrics. All the sports right, has moved right, into right. the met something that Rich absolutely hates. Like baseball is analytically driven to a detriment, almost in some people's opinions. Well, in in a hundred years, we're all just going to turn into data streams. We are just da we are data from Star Trek. Yeah, we're all going to be data from Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> we're already almost there. Uh, I, you know, like I don't know. I love the data. I don't know if 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 it's a benefit to the sport or it's a you know. I, I the argument could be for both sides, but I think for WWE, they need to they need to analyze these things, and they've analyzed Logan Paul's following, and they feel a major benefit from it. Also, the fact that this guy looks remarkable. Right? Yeah, dude. He looks great body, like a, great, great in the ring. He looks like a medieval prince. Like, he really, this guy is like yeah, tall, he looks handsome. Like, what are you? What are you? A grown Joffrey Baratheon? There you go. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. You were waiting for that. I, I wasn't. <laughs> we do. We I do had a great MG Geek joke. You know what I wanted to say? Oh yeah. Please. I, I want to say uh, when when MG comes on came on camera. I want to say he looks like a young Joffrey Baratheon a, after he was poisoned. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty, a good joke it's a good ball busting joke that's a good ball uh, busting joke real quick before we move on i got a dollar 99 here from batcher 3000 bow, good, bow, morning. Bow. good morning my pee poppers pee poppers i like that <laughs> oh I, so you like you like the press conference and are you excited about 
Logan Paul versus Roman Reigns. I'm not like I, I'm not. Listen, you know, I'm way more excited for tomorrow. But you know what? One o'clock in the afternoon. All right, I'm in. I can commit to this on a Saturday. I, I guess you're coming over. Ooh, we'll yeah, do our dude. Saturday shindig. Those are always fun. Those impromptu Saturday parties. A lot of fun. That yeah, was we'll a lot that. of fun. Sure. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, all right. What what else do we have here? Let's go into so, some other stuff. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow yes. is the big deal for us and for AEW fans around the world. Uh, AEW returns to Queens to Arthur Ashe Stadium for AEW Grand Slam, which is going to be a live dynamite. And I'm not sure what else they're recording. I think they're recording... Two hours of Rampage. Two hours of Rampage? Jeez. Yeah. All right. But so, that's going to... Okay. And Elevation. Oh, crap. They're doing it. I, they... they start at 7, I think, and, and do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what they should do is do the first hour of Rampage first. Mm-hmm. Do the second hour of Rampage after. I'm actually surprised. The Ring of Honor World uh the Ring of Honor uh World Championship match, I thought that that would have been on Rampage. But it's not. It's on Dynamite. And I'm very surprised by this. Um Did this you is going to be a long show. Was, yeah, it's going to be a very long show. Uh, Rich, let's go down the card. Yeah, let's see here. AW Dynamite Grand Slam, Wednesday, September 21st, 8 p.m. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have the Ring of Honor World Championship, Claudio Casignoli versus Jericho. You know what? Before we continue. Oh, I know what you want to do. Can I just talk about how there's still tickets on sale, which is a yes. shame. And no Kenny, no Bucks, mm-hmm. no CM Punk on this card i think that's a shame it may it irks me a little bit as a fan it does because me too. you, you look I got, at this we got stuff screwed. yeah you look at this stuff and you're like uh there's a part of me that's like uh what bums they deprived arenas of their presence for some silly nonsense that silly silly that selfish day. nonsense on a tv show yeah i listen right i agree with you this to be honest like do you remember like with Terrible comparison here, right? And I'm not comparing it, but I'm I'm gonna give an example. Like I remember growing up and like reading that like the demise of WCW, right? Like we experienced it on TV. I'm not I'm not comparing it at all. But I would always hear right, right. that once you once you like forget about like the crappy stuff they do on TV, but like when the fans feel like they got taken or they're you know like they're not gonna get the best of what they wanted to see, it's very difficult to get those fans back. I'm not right. saying that this is the case, but this is the first time with AEW that I felt. I'm like, you know what? This bothers me. I'm like, you know, it's not a cheap event. It, the, the ticket prices mm-hmm. were, were, were expensive. I believe Tony said that this is going to be a million dollar gate, you know, right, with right. 13,000, not 20,000 people because the tickets were much cheaper last year. They're going to have about 13,000 people in that building, which is plenty. They're going to have a stage set up this year, so they weren't going to have the same amount. But, you know, like, I feel like I'm not getting what I wanted. I'm not getting to see, you know, Omega in a match or CM Punk in a match or the Bucks in a match. I agree with you 100%. Like, I'm bummed at that, but they mm. did do a very good job at making this card feel like a big deal. It is a big deal card. It's a good card. This is a super solid dynamite card, <clears throat> They but they set the bar last year. You know, ridiculous card, yeah. ridiculous dream matches. You know, you started a show with Kenny Omega versus Brian Daniels. To a 30-minute draw, and everybody was thrilled that it was a draw. Right? Uh, unbelievable time. Homicide, Eddie Kings, you know, like all that stuff like mattered, right? This year, I'm not saying it's going to be bad, but I I do feel like, yeah, man, couldn't these millionaires keep it in their pants for like 20 minutes? I know. And just be like, hey, let's take a step back, blah, blah, Let, blah, blah, blah. Let's you bring, know? Yeah, but Rich, listen. You know, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, Punk was obviously l- l- out of his mind. He just had a match. He's, uh, you know, like psychologically, that plays a big part in how you're reacting mm-hmm. to things. You're you're pumped up with adrenaline. These guys are pumped. He's shitting all over you. Yeah. Uh, it, it, like it, everything was wrong <laughs> from the beginning. Everything was yeah. wrong. Uh, and now we're not getting it. You know. Uh, Listen, I mean, it is. Could could they could they unsuspend Kenny and the Bucks and they do a surprise thing? Sure, I think so. I think we're going to get a couple of surprises. I do think we're going to get Adam Cole. Well, I I would imagine, yeah, I would at imagine. some point. But yeah, I would imagine. I'm I'm happy. Want to go down the card? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I, again, we're not saying that this is this is a awesome card. 
you know, yeah. but I do think they would have sold all the tickets if certain parties were advertising there. Right. Yeah. If you had if you had CM Punk. Well, OK, let's talk about this. Go go into go into the card and I'm going to bring up a different option. Ring of Honor World Championship. Claudio Castagnoli versus Chris Jericho. I'm looking forward to this. I think this is going to be a barn burner. OK, you know, I'm invested in this. Same here. Should, should Jericho win the Ring of Honor title? I would love him to. Oh, dude. But again, I'm not going into I'm not going to yeah. go into any of that like, well, you know, the 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 lineage of the Ring of Honor title and the meaning for Claudio to have that title and baba. Forget it. You know what? As a fan, if I'm going in there as a fan, I'd love to see Jericho win that title and do something crazy. Boot out of the building. Yeah, I kind of want to see that. So check this out. Here's yeah. my theory. I agree with you 100%, right? Thank Here's you. my theory with Jericho. Jericho wins that title and much like he did with AEW, he's the new Ring of Honor champ going into TV. Well, that's okay. Funny you say that because uh, on Observer, when we were talking about this, I had Joel Pearl on, by the way, on Observer. Who? Joel Pearl. Oh, uh, oh Jorn, Joel Paul? No, no, no. <laughs> Jorn Paul. Mm-hmm. I, I want eventually his name just to be... Oh, Jorn Paul, the Swedish Jorn Paul. Yeah, the Swedish fella, Jorn Paul. <laughs> um, I, I, we were talking about this and... You know, I, if if they have TV, right? Uh, if they have TV or whatever Tony is coming up with, like he's leading into TV, Jericho should be the champion. Yes. A, because you, you're going to want to see him get beat. You're going to want to see, want to know who that first person to beat him is. And also he's going to be a great shitty heel crapping all over Ring of Honor, which is going to be fantastic. It, I think it's the right move. I, I think it would be deliciously entertaining. And I also think, I feel like Jericho would get booed out of the building. Oh, 100%. I would love to see that. I, I uh, yeah. I, there's, you know, like Jericho is one of those, has always been one of those wrestlers that I love to see just get booed out of a building. <laughs> He's great at it. He's so good. He's so good at it. Yeah. Um, what do you, real quick, side yeah. note question, is Jericho the real goat? Dude, you know, I have to tell you, he he left WWE, did this stuff in Japan, and everybody was saying, my God, you know, he's do he's doing great. Go say EW, he has that opening match, he wins the title, everybody agrees that this guy should have been their first world champion. Most people, right? Most people were happy with mm -hmm. the decision, made sense, big name, put him on TV, it's going to bring eyeballs, and he did his job. He did a great job. And then at some point, you know, I think a little bit of his political stance played a factor on people's opinion of him uh a lot of assumptions on on him drinking and his weight became a big problem you know i mm -hmm. think i think the the not the downfall but the moment of exposure was after that nba game you remember they had that nba lead-in and everybody was excited yes. about this nba lead-in and all these people that hadn't seen Chris Jericho in about 10 years saw Chris Jericho and he was a much bigger Chris Jericho and everybody started crapping oh, yeah. all over him. I think that was the moment that he, he he changed everything, right? He started losing weight. He started working out more. Uh, I, I think we're in a very positive moment for Chris Jericho. I don't know how much longer he has it being at this level, but uh, I mean, would you would you think this is the best he's looked in maybe maybe 15 years? Well, yes, because he almost died. Uh, not too long ago, so he had to change his lifestyle up a little bit, and he looks better than ever. I think what he's happened? Better he was sick. Ever. Yeah, he got. I forgot what it was called, but he got something, and it was like it was very close to like life threatening, and he had to like kind of work through it. You know, wow. So he slowed down. Infection? What was I'm that? I'm not it was sure if it was a, when yeah. he was overseas on on tour with Bozzy, and he it was, was a pulmonary playing. thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But he had a pulmonary embolism. Yeah, pul pulmonary embolism. Yeah, and now he's like back to 110%. Wow, good for him. But yeah, he looks great. It's a testament to like, you know, he was off TV for for that little bit, came back looking awesome, you know? Yeah, hey, he um, looks great. He's one of those guys that I think he could have, uh, he could have that Ric Flair Rock and Roll Express thing going on. Keep I don't know how much longer, you know, like, can you go another 15 years. He's in his fifties already, you know, but at one point you're going to have to say like, okay, we need, we need to create another guy. Somebody has to become the guy, right? There's somebody who's the next Chris Jericho that we could use. That's a little bit younger. I, I listen, man, he's really stepped it up and he's a, he's a big leader there. He has a lot of, he, he helps a lot of people all positive. Uh, he's insane. Next, I mean, all wrestlers yeah, are. Yeah. 
Um, up next, we have the AEW All Atlantic Championship: Pack versus Orange Cassidy. I think this is going to be a good one. Let Pac keep on, hang on to that belt. I, I, I don't like the limbo that Orange Cassidy is in. Is he a comedy character or do we take him serious? I think they're, they're crossing the line into a little bit of both. He's an interesting, he's an interesting cat because I think his booking suffered with the acquisition of all these big names. Yeah. You but know, he, like, he, you know, he, you know what else actually hurt him? Jefferson Airplane. Why is that? Because when he had he had his theme, he had the Pixies, right? Mm-hmm. That got so over just around the time that they changed it back to uh, uh, Jane. Okay. So I, I think it was a mistake. I think it was actually a detriment. Like the, his crowd reaction went down after that. People got really into the Pixies. They got into his theme. Yeah. Great theme. Great theme. Uh, who do you think takes it? Pack. I think we're gonna see like a Kip Sabian interruption on this. I'm. A, I. I think they should. They yeah. got to do something with Kip. Uh, AEW World Tag Team Championship Swerve in Our Glory versus the Acclaimed. Do you think this should open the show with the Acclaimed taking it in New York? Well, I was thinking this, or it has to be Claudio and Jericho. Right. Right. It has to be either or. Some people are saying, should this be the main event? You know, there's a strong argument for it, especially on this show. Um, ah, man, I really want to see the claim take it. They Listen, they, they tore the house down at their last big match. They did. I, I, I still believe that the world title should always be the main event, but uh, I, I, I think the anticipation is that they will win the titles in New York. And if they don't, it'll really deflate that entire building. I think so. Uh, we Can have I say the... one thing on, on this real yes. quick. No. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know. Last year, uh, the main event, the the title match, went first. I think they're going to do that again. No, but that was because they were going to go to a draw. I mean, it could. You never know. But I'm and they wanted to make sure that first. they go thirty minutes to a draw. You can't do that if you run over in time, right? Then you would have to change your whole main event. Well, they also sent people yeah. home happy with homicide running. Yeah, because who doesn't who who doesn't leave happy with homicide awkwardly running into the ring? <laughs> do you think do you think they're gonna do that again this year? They're just gonna do like I, you know, let's have Eddie Kingston close out the show again because he's he's the ultimate New Yorker on that roster. If Luigi Primo is not there this week, I don't ever want to hear that Tony Khan is a great booker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Tony, I'm talking to you. Please do me a favor. Talking to you. Talking to you. Get Talk me Luigi you. Primo. I want to see Luigi Primo just, just, hi, I'm a Luigi Primo. And then just boom, you just get kicked. Uh, they're not doing like a rumble, are they? No, they are. They're doing, they're doing yeah. a, a match on, uh, on Rampage. They're doing a golden ticket battle royal on Rampage. Okay, we'll go into that after this. Okay, yeah. Uh, so interim AEW Worlds Championship, Tony Storm versus Britt Baker versus Serena D versus Athena. I think Tony Storm should retain. Tony should definitely retain. Yeah, it's going to be a fun match. I feel like it's going to be a quick one, though, unfortunately. Uh, and you have the Grand Slam Tournament of Champions finals for the AEW World Championship. John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. Does John Moxley become a three-time champ, or does Danielson get that belt and the crowd goes wild? I, I would say if you want me to stay for the entirety of this show, you have Danielson win the belt. Yes. Uh, I, I would be very disappointed if I, if I don't get on that 940 back to, back to Bayside. <laughs> and I not, stayed. not going to happen. Yeah. And I stayed. And Danielson does not win the title. Uh, listen, I, 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 I adore everything Mox has done. But I think yeah. it's, you know, you're, you're trying to change things up a little bit. You're trying to get, you know, that, that next week viewership. What are you more in t- inclined to tune into? John Moxley winning the title and you turning it, uh, tuning in, or I'm getting messages right now. Are you going to Grand Slam? I don't know who this is. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow, guys. We'll find out tomorrow, guys. I'll find out who this is. I got to look at my chat. I, I only have a number. It's on my laptop. Um, oh, I've been giving out your number to like everybody who's oh, been DMing me, dude. That's what it is. That's Yo, what it I is. Yo, can I have Andrew's number? Can I have Andrew's number? Can I have Andrew's number? That's what it is. Uh, is Andrew selling his underwears? Andrew like, selling his know, underwears? I was like, here's his number. 
He has his Ask number. Him. Just call him. He just. He, I bring it personally, though. <laughs> you got to pay for my flight to bring it to you personally. I, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, here's my question. Are you more inclined to tune in next week at the top of the hour at 8 o'clock to see John Moxley with the title or, or Brian Danielson? You know what? It, it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the nerd and go both these guys. Uh, I want to see the story play out, how it affects the Blackpool Combat Club. Is it going to be a handshake deal? Is it going to be dissension in the ranks? I would love to see Danielson get that belt, especially fighting a guy in his stable. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's a, there's all these things in the air. The other thing here is MJF. MJF has the, the chip. He's got the brief chip. The brief chip. <laughs> <laughs> and he already started something with Moxley. Right. Right? So there's, there's a lot of these moving parts. Like, everything in that promo led you to believe that it's going to be John Moxley and, and MJF for the title. But I think Danielson is, is you got to do it now. You know, you also don't, don't know when you're going to have another opportunity with Danielson to put the title on him. A lot of these things are in the air. Rampage. Dude, r- I'm sorry. Would yeah. you rather see MJF versus Mox or MJF versus Danielson? Great question. Uh, either or. But I do want to see Danielson win the title. Yes. Rampage, we have the golden ticket battle royal for a shot against for the AW World Champion. So now we have a second, uh, I guess, number one contendership match. We have the golden sure. ticket battle royal. Hangman Page, Penta, Jay Lethal, Lance Archer announced so far. TBS champion Jade Cargill against Diamante. Eddie Kingston versus Sammy Guevara. Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Jungle Boy Ray Phoenix. No DQ match. Sting and Darby Allen versus Buddy Matthews and Brody S- King. Super excited about that. <laughs> Hook and Action Bronson versus uh, 2.0. Samoa Joe and Wardlow versus Tony Nese and Josh Woods. Right now, there are 12,000 tickets distributed. Current capacity is 15,314 and available tickets, 3,321. Uh, 3, Great lineup for Rampage. Very good lineup for both shows. Yeah, Let's very, very solid, solid lineup. I do think there's going to be, it, there has to be a lot of surprises like last year, you know, maybe some off camera stuff that they don't show. Um, but listen, I'm liking Rampage. I, it's it's going to be fun to see Action Bronson wrestling. You know what would have been hysterical? Remember when uh, when uh, we turned into wizards at at the MSG show when you put your finger in my mouth and then oh, we yeah, just yeah. like became wizards? It would have been hysterical left. if they put the camera on us when that was happening. <laughs> Are you saying that we should do that again tomorrow? <laughs> I'll make a call. That'll be our thing. That could be our thing. I'm gonna set a timer for when you arrive to when you leave. I want to see how long you could last. You know what you should do? We're, you should... we're sitting in different sections. Yeah, we are. Uh, you should document, like, message me every like 30 minutes and ask me like how I feel, and then you could give everybody an update on if I'm oh, approaching, absolutely. if my chariot is turning into a pumpkin or not. I will give the Twitterverse the Andrew Zarian update of uh, time, time well spent. You might fall. Listen, nobody knows what you're gonna do. You might leave early. You might fall asleep. You might show up wasted. You might get everybody else wasted. <laughs> I might get, it's all possible. It's all possible. And if you guys see us, please don't say hi to us. No, I'm uh, you know what? <laughs> please say hi to us. Please say please hi say to hi us. us. Yeah. High five us. Uh, fist bump us. Do a little dance in front of us. I love that. Hugs. Oh, Depends. do you want to give yeah. your PSA? Okay. Rich and I are going to give you a little PSA, and then we're going to go into our Q&A. Okay. Rich, this event is in Flushing Meadow Park. It is in Flushing, Queens. Now, it is not unlike most arenas in the developed world where you have hotels and buildings and lunch and dinner and restaurants and bars around the arena because you want to make as much money as you can on the, I don't know, 40,000 people that go to City Field or the 20,000 people that go to Arthur Ashe. You want to make those, that money. Uh-uh, not in New York. Will its point that entire section is locked in Legal battles, litigation, political in litigation, p- uh, <laughs> political issues. People are holding up, uh, uh, holding up on developments because they won't sell their chop shops. It's mob ridden. It, it is an insane area. So you have nothing by Arthur Ashe and Mets right at City Field. You got to well, leave that area. Well, City Field did it right. I can just put that little asterisk because there's a million places to eat and drink inside inside a City, City Field. Field. Unfortunately, so you don't need to for go you, anywhere else. You can't go inside City Field because you're going to Arthur Ashe. Right. Arthur Ashe had last year the cons- they, I don't think they were ready for the wrestling fans last they year. Weren't. As soon as 
everybody got in. It just got dirty. There's cigarette butts everywhere. Uh, the lines for beer were like 25 minutes long. So I suggest sneaking stuff in uh, pregame. We're going to yeah. pregame a little bit. Uh, yeah, pro- I'm sure I'm going to pregame. In parts unknown, we may let you guys know where we're going to be so you can come and say hi. Uh, no hugs at first until you buy us a drink, though. Yeah, yeah. kisses after the drink. <laughs> Kisses after the drink and hugs. Hug for the drink. drink. Kisses after the drink. Uh, I, sneak, I just, sneak I'm booze just gonna... in. It's probably super easy to sneak booze in. No, really no, do don't that. sneak booze in. Sneak booze in. Just do it. Yeah, sneak um, booze in. No, but but here's here's a reality, right? So if you are going anywhere prior to this and you want something convenient, I'm going to tell you the most convenient thing to do. Go to Bayside. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. There's a municipal parking lot in Bayside. Get to Bayside, park your car in the lot eight hours or park it in the street, you know, like on the side streets. You can do an eight hour parking in Bayside. We have all the food and drinking you want to do. You walk two blocks to the train. You get on that train. You, you go westbound to Metz, Mil, Metz Wills Point and you're done. You don't have to do this crazy hunt at, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning trying to find something to eat. There. OK, so to be specific about that, there is. It's easy to get to Bayside, uh, where Bell Boulevard is. There is a giant municipal parking lot. There is street parking. There is a Long Island Railroad that will take you to the show and take you back to the city or take you back to Long Island if you need to go there. Uh, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to hop on that train at some point. It's a 15-minute train ride to Arthur Ashe. It leaves you about like five blocks away on a boardwalk. Less than that, so You're going to have to it's walk a little minutes. bit. Seven minutes. You're going to have to walk a little bit once you get off the train, but it's easy peasy. You can't really ask for better door-to-door service than that. No, everybody got everybody got stuck in Flushing. They, there was, uh, like, everybody thought, like, oh, well, I'll just get a place in Flushing. I'll hang out in Flushing. No, Flushing closes at, like, 10 o'clock. But also last year, I felt like I was screaming into the ether because everybody was asking me about that. And I, I know, was you telling them everybody. specifically, like, hey, this is what you need to do. And not just because, you know, that shit ended at midnight yesterday, not yesterday, last year. Yeah. And people were stranded. Uh, I parked my car in a lot that's like kind of like a secret lot. Not really, but it's in the Skyview Mall and parking yeah. was like seven bucks. So I leave my car there sometimes if I'm going to City Field or Arthur Ashe. It's a little bit of a walk. It's like a half a mile walk, but your car is there. You can hop in your car home. There's no traffic late at night. I had a lot of people saying like, hey, all you can buy- get is dumpling places. That's all that's great. open. I'm like, yeah, that's all that's open because you're in Chinatown. That's what flushing is. Uh, great that's Chinatown. Though. Great dumplings. Great, here. great dumplings. Oh, uh, the great stinkier dumplings. the better. Je- so you know, Jess works there. She brings home yeah. the stinkiest dumplings in the world. Delicious, amazing. The stinkier the better. You want right. to do some questions? Let's do some Q and A's, boys and girls. Hey, listen. In all honesty, if you see us there on Wednesday. Say hello, please. Uh, we yeah. are the nicest people in the world. There's nothing. We're not gonna. Uh, you may get a dick punch. That may happen. <laughs> we may do some jackass stuff on you. Hey, uh, is Issa? <laughs> Issa is in Puerto Rico. You know, you know that they yeah. got terribly flooded. Yeah, I hope she's okay. I sent her a message last night. You know, saying like, "Hey, do you need anything? Like, oh, what, is everything okay?" So I, I think she was supposed to be here, but uh, not anymore. I don't think she's coming. Um. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But, very much know. so. She's she's very much Godspeed. one of my favorite people. Yes, same here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be fun. We'll let you guys know where we're going to hang out ahead of time if you want to pop by and say hi. Separate checks, though. Separate checks. Separate yeah. checks. We had, we, had, we had a couple of bozos trying to st- throw stuff on our tab last year. Mm. Not, I not, had, not very nice. It, was it Tony Khan? It wasn't Tony Khan. Maybe. Hey, it was, you know, in like a mustache? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> a mustache. All right. All right. What let's do have? some questions. Yeah. Uh, this is from uh, Balor Club Guy. Yeah. What's up, boys? Moxley versus Danielson has to be the finals of the AEW World Title Tournament. If you're booking this, do you put the title on Moxley again or give Danielson the title? We just answered that. I would, I would put, dude, uh, I would put the title on Danielson for sure. I, I really, you know, he's one of my favorite wrestlers. Like, uh, I, oh, yeah. I don't have a lot of those. Like, I don't have favoritism in wrestling anymore. It's difficult to have favoritism, like when you cover it. But like, hundred percent, like. He's the guy for me. I, w- I want him to do so much. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, he's he's got... He has the potential to have a better than Shawn Michaels second half of his career. Absolutely. 100%. Right? Yeah. Shawn Michaels is the bar for that. After the four-year absence, 
he and had a the, tremendous run. You know, like were you were you a Bret Hart or a Sean fan, or both? Always, always Sean. Always Sean. See, always Sean for me. But I like Bret was the guy. But you know how I ended up becoming a Sean fan? I was a Marty fan. Marty was a star for me, not Sean. Marty Gennardi. Marty Gennardi was was the guy for me. <laughs> I would have told you that that Shawn Michaels has nothing in his tank. It's all about Marty. I want Marty. To, I when he when Marty and him faced off at that WrestleMania. Was it WrestleMania he faced off? Was it WrestleMania or SummerSlam? No, no. Tatanka was WrestleMania. Actually, that's another one. I was a big Tatanka fan. I thought Tatanka could have been a world champion. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see Tatanka as the world champion, but Marty Jannetty is another one. Rumble '93. Yeah, that was yeah, it was the Rumble '93. I thought Marty sh it was the guy. Like, I was a huge Marty fan. Interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah big time. You know why? Because he's a brunette, and I like brunettes, <laughs> and I don't like blondes. <laughs> That's why. Well, I'm a big fan of blondes. Uh, this is from BC Knight off of Twitch. Hashtag Ask Matt Men. What would be the best time to put the title on MJF? Grand Slam, third anniversary of Dynamite, or full gear? Uh, if you want heat on him... Uh, see, I, and I don't think it's positive heat. I think if, if let's say Danielson wins or Mox wins and then MJF cashes in. I don't know, unless he cashes in on, on Mox, you know, Danielson loses, Mox wins, MJF cashes in. You could do the third anniversary of Dynamite. I think that might be big. Or you could do something where Hangman now gets that other chip. You know, he gets the golden ticket and you have MJF and him in a program for a little bit. Sure. Right. You could do that. You could you could do something there. I, I think there's a lot of a uh, lot of things you could do. I don't want to see I, personally my thing, not saying that this is the right way to book it. I don't want to see MJF cash in on Danielson or Mox. I think that you I want to leave happy. Yes, I agree with that. I think Hangman's going to win that that thing, by the way. You think Hangman's going to win the his tournament? His uh, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, here's a super chat from Shreya Hashemi. Guys, if you want to super chat us, your question will be answered first. Hashemi. The amount is cool. Uh, how will you book MJF for the next nine months? That is a good topic that we were just talking about. I think he should wrestle more. Yes. I'd like to see him wrestle way more. Um, I'd like to see him wrestle way more. That's how I would book him for the next nine months. You want to see him actually be in the ring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a dollar ninety nine. Hold on, you gotta read it. You gotta read it. You gotta read it the right way. What? What are you talking about? War games in Boston? No, you gotta do a Boston accent. I. I that's my uh, Boston. That's your Boston accent. Boston. 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 Star Wars. Star Wars. Uh, from the Nerd Guru. War games in Boston. Sasha gotta be there, right? Hey, that's go. good. That's very good. <laughs> That was very good. Congratulations. Oh, very okay. much that uh, you would you would have been perfect in the departed. Did I win? You win. By the way, I don't do... I don't like the departed. I'm going to tell you something. I think yeah, it's please. it's not a Scorsese film. It's it's shot so different. I don't care for it. Do you think it is the worst Scorsese film? I, I I'm well, I'm sure they well what would you say is the worst one? You know, uh I don't really know. I haven't seen a lot of his like other. Yeah, I got But the, the ones I'm from gonna, the last couple of years, I haven't seen. I, um, I hate when people like hype up a movie and you're like, oh, you haven't seen The Departed? You haven't seen it? And then I finally saw it and I was like, eh, the Boston Irish mob does nothing for me. So here's I the, want those the big Italian hands. That's what I want. I want I want Italian mobsters. I enjoy that movie a lot. I you think did. it's very snappy. I really enjoy the movie. I, it's weird. I think there, there's, there's two thoughts about that movie. I think it's weird because it's a adaptation of a Chinese film called Internal Affairs. Um, and I think a lot of the original story kind of got lost in translation, but solid movie. I like that movie a lot. The other thing is you meet a lot of people who go, you know, what movie's my favorite movie. The Departed. The Departed. Is my, the Departed. You know I throw, I throw it, go ahead. Heat. Heat is another one. Heat's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a really good movie. But don't tell me that because I like Goodfellas, I'm going to love Heat. Well, here's another hot take for you. How do you feel about Scarface? Okay. I loved Scarface. Uh-huh. Until Pacino I started Scarface. watching. And, and the more I watched it and the older I got, the more idiotic I thought Scarface is. 
Right. I feel the same way. And I I don't feel bad anymore saying that. I really don't feel bad anymore. You people have made me feel terrible about disliking Scarface as an adult. I just think it's a little buffoony. I think it's hysterical. It's very silly. It's a very silly movie. Um, I I don't know. Like I I watched it like a couple years ago because just like hadn't really seen it. Okay. So yeah. we went through all of it, right? We went through the Godfathers. By the way, Godfather Two, the best one. Yeah. Godfather Two is the better one. Godfather One is great. Godfather Three, eh, not not good at all. Yeah. Not great. If if you're giving me a list of mob films, Goodfellas by like nothing compares to Goodfellas for me. You Casino, can't even Casinos Casinos Casino, a close second. Very good, very close second, but. Of course, Goodfellas gets number one billing because it takes place in Queens. Right. And it's a so, super quotable movie. Very quotable movie. Uh, I, I've seen that movie thousands of times. I will watch it every time it's on TV. Uh, Ray Liotta is, and, his, and his face is so scary to me in that movie. Absolutely. It's the uh, he's a terrible Henry Hill. <laughs> if, if you know anything about Henry Hill, the Stern Show ruined the movie for me in that sense. Uh, Karen. Karen, Karen. That's all he says Come in the on. movie, right? Come on, yeah. Karen. Uh, fantastic movie. Keat, very good. Nowhere near Goodfellas. Casino, fantastic. Casino's amazing. Casino's amazing. Um, and definitely Sopranos. But don't tell me that Scarface is up there by today's standards. No, Scarface is an interesting movie. It's a good Brian. Give me a good Scarface flag. line. Give me a good <laughs> That's my scarf. Oh, you know, like uh, I, I, I. No, that's I not could do a, That's a. I could do a. That's a sound of the woman. Sound of the woman. Sound of the woman. Hua. I think um, the Scarface thing gets really overblown, and people. I know motherfuckers love Scarface, dude. You know, but it's kind of a silly movie. I think it's very silly. It's a silly character. Uh, Dana Carvey does an amazing Scarface impression. Uh, my Scarface is terrible because it's it's all like grumbly, <laughs> with the it's like the worst Cuban accent on the planet. Oh, oh my god. Pacino's Cuban accent is perfect. Okay, Come on. but it's big it's, man, it's, big man, big man. Uh, he is, but he's playing Pacino with a with a ethnic accent. He does that in every movie. It's the same uh, ethnic a- accent. His Italian, his Cuban, all the same. His Irish, his Russian, all the same. I uh, I always tell the truth, even when I lie. Yeah, great one. Great, great line. A good line. Stupid, Mang. stupid guy. Man, <laughs> stupid guy. No stupid offense, all these Scarface heads out there. <laughs> uh, How did we get here? How did we get here, Andrew? <laughs> Bring us back. I'm going to tell you something. You know what? Bring each of you guys, each of you guys, for the, there is no other podcast that does this. No. Is Jorn Pearl on Fightful Over Book doing this? Is Sean Ross Sapp, the King of Scoops, doing this? I do hear Sean has an amazing Scarface impression. <laughs> so does Dave. But you know what? He, how he does it? He does it with his bicep. He draws Al Pacino on the bicep. Whoa. And then like, he just does this. He just like talks like him like that. Everything is with his bicep, man. It's wild. When you see M- him, that's how you shake hands. You got you to like, shake his bicep. MDJ C.S.C. Smith in the chat says he's as good as Sean Connery and Patrick Stewart at doing different accents. Which is true. Sean Connery was in a million movies that required different accents, which he never did. Ah, <sighs> he he's Sean Connery. Oh, here's another good, one. Yeah, here's a good one. How do you feel about the Untouchables? It's good. It's okay. It's good. It's a good movie. I, good I don't have. It, it's fine. It's fine. But it's an older. But the Untouchables takes place in what year? Ah, uh, 40s, I think. Yeah, I, I, I'm not crazy what, about the, like, the mobsters 40s? from there. Yeah, I'm not like like the old timey Tommy Gun mo- yeah, yeah, mobsters, yeah, yeah. like flat top Dick Tracy mobsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, eh. You want, I like you want a, new mobsters. I want, I want, I want longshoreman mobsters. Okay, I want. Okay, I want, you want sanitation the worker mobsters. <laughs> sure. I want contractor. I'm busting my ball. Look at my hands. You think I'm a mobster? Look at these concrete hands. And then the hands are dipped in concrete. Kenzie Abbott, the hood yeah. loves Scarface. That is a hundred. The hood does love Scarface. Listen, I get it. I get it, dude. I get it. It's a great come up in story. Great story. You will never see more leather Scarface jackets in the world. Yeah. Than, New- than, than, than in New York. <laughs> yeah. All right. What oh, else do we have? All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, moving on. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. Oh, did on. you no, like no, no. the Irishman? Okay. Great that question, Horny Harry Tarjanian. Um, <laughs> I, I really like the Irishman. I very much liked it. A lot of yeah. people did not like the Irishman. They thought it was too long. I didn't have that experience. 
I enjoyed that movie very much so. How did you like the face morphing technology that was employed in that movie? Uh, the face morphing technology was weird. And also uh, old man Robert De Niro doing the kicks as a young yeah. man. Very weird. You know, uh, I feel like De Niro, like De Niro has uh, plummeted as far as like acting goes for me <laughs> over the last like 15 years. Because he's, he just does Robert De Niro. Him, him mm. uh, Sl Sly Stallone, or as I like to call him, a, a, a version of my father that made all the right decisions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Arnold have become stereotypes of themselves. Uh, Arnold was at least a governor. The governor, yeah. Uh, this is let's 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 bring this All back. Right, let's go. Uh, this is four ninety nine from EMC four K. If the acclaimed win the tag belts, does it lead to FTR challenging to be a quad champs at full gear? I would love that. Does he, dude? I I think you could do it. I don't think anybody would feel bad if yeah. the acclaimed lost to FTR, but I think the acclaimed should run around for a little bit with that title. And you know what? Uh, and that's a great setup for the Bucks, right? Great setup yeah. for the Bucks. For the returning bucks, like, are, are we supposed to get the news on the suspensions today? I was told that the news was supposed to. Uh, I'll tell you off the air, but I, 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 I could swear. Actually, I'll see it here. I, 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 I could swear I, I had heard or read that we should know this week. Right. Right. Like, I, I think it's time now. I think we know we already know the first set of the, the, the people that came off suspension. But that was all preliminary stuff. So obviously the investigation has, has concluded enough to know who was involved and who wasn't. Okay. Do you think they're going to do something last minute tonight to boost ticket sales? I don't know. I don't know what else they could do. I don't know what else they could do. All right. You want to move on? Yeah. This is from uh, MDJC Smith. Another acclaimed question. Does anyone, th and does anyone think that AEW missed out on lightning in a bottle with the acclaimed at all out? The pop at Arthur Ashe will be expected. So do you think it's better to screw them over? I, I think, I, I, first of all, great question, right? Um, yeah. There's a lot of discussion that could, should, should they have made an audible at all out and, and had the acclaim win the title? No, if the plan was for them to win the title at Arthur Ashe, right? I, I would say if this is the plan, I, I think they're okay. Um, you know, being in New York, that building needs something positive. I think there's going to be a lot of happy moments. You don't, you want to kind of el eliminate the negativity from what happened the last couple of weeks. The other thing, you know, no matter, no matter the acclaim winning or not, or no matter what the results of that pay-per-view were, there was only one thing that people were talking about, and that was the brawl at the scrum. So would it have, you know, stolen their thunder? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to reserve the answer till Friday. Okay. Because I, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I, hope, I hope it works out for them. I, I think those guys are really talented. Uh, Max Caster definitely is something special. For sure. Right? I think those guys are an interesting... Both of them. Both of them, by the way. Let me just say that. I, I'm, not, I'm not just picking one over the other. I think they're both very... very Anthony Bowen is very talented also. Uh, New Jersey kid. You know, grew up in Jersey. He's from Nutley. Uh, I think Max Caster's from Rockville Center. Hey, yeah, they're both New Yorkers. He's probably, both he's probably 8 at plus 195. I'm sure. Somebody ask him. You know what? Max, somebody ask Max, Max gets it. If he's been to press in, uh, in Rockville Center, and what he thinks of it. <laughs> um, I, I think they're a very interesting team because they came in with such fire off the indies to AEW and they're AEW originals, I guess, at this point, you know, and you could see there, you could see them be like a forever tag team. I think a lot of, a lot of backstage stuff has probably been invested into them because of their chemistry. And look, being paired with Billy Gunn works. You know what? You would think that that wouldn't work. You would be like, okay, that's a weird combination. Billy Gunn and, the, and these two young, you know, youthful guys. You but, know, Billy, Billy doesn't match their vibe. But you know what? He fucking does. He Billy does fits in like a glove with those guys. He, or a scissor. He has. Or a scissor. He has that. The experience that him and Rodog have, I feel like, is very similar to uh, Max yes. Caster and Bowens. You know where what? It's like, That's great. If you, 
if you want to be this type of guy like we were, this is how you do it. And this is how you get the crowd over. You know, like you don't you need hand gestures, man. Hand gestures. That's what you need. <laughs> you know, imagine that that's like the key to wrestling. Oh, yeah. Like hand cool gestures. Hand gesture. Bullet club. Pow, pow. Bullet club. Pow, Aust- pow, Austin. Bullet club. Austin middle finger. Too sweet. Yeah. Suck it. Too- now you okay. got the scissor. scissor me daddy. Scissor me daddy. What's next? Mm. Uh, we got another super chat here. This is from Ryan. Palacio me fella. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> With the video WWE dropped as part of the QR code with the White Rabbit stuff last night, are they building to Bray Wyatt's return? Because there were a couple of hints that pointed to him in it. Just Bad Bunny. Hey. 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 Bad Bunny should be coming back soon, by the way. Yeah, for sure. I, I know that they're we working gonna, on it. What's the tag match that ends up having Logan Paul and Bad Bunny face each other? Oh, my God. You know what? I want I, I want Bad Bunny to crush him. You know what? That's the match. <laughs> That's the match, guys. Bad Bunny versus Logan Paul? Bad Bunny versus Logan Paul. That is like a creator character gone wild. Bad Bunny versus Logan Paul. Uh, uh, you want That could sell out on pay-per-view. With who and whose corner? Like, who would be in Logan Paul's corner? Who would be in Bad Bunny's corner? Oh, um, I would put Bobby Schmurder in Bad Bunny's okay. corner. <laughs> and I would put... Is, is Bobby Schmurder part of the active WWE roster? He's, he's, he's in my universe. Mm-hmm. He's in my universe. I watched that man sing with Chris Kattan and Hathaway, okay? I am such a fan of him at this point, of Bobby Schmurder. Just for that experience. He was doing the whole Mango thing with Chris Kattan. You, 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 that thing. Unbelievable. The, no, Mango was a different bit. Mango was a different bit Chris Kattan did. All right, what else do we have? Oh, oh so, yeah, I, it has to be Bray, right? I, I, mm-hmm. I would be disappointed if it's not Bray. Wouldn't you be? Yeah, man, like, it's got to be Bray. It's got to be something cool. I think, they're, you know, Triple H likes to do cool shit. I think we're going to get some cool shit. Hey, look at Paul that. London. Friend of the show, Jim Porl. Jorl Pearl. In the chat room. Jorl and Jersh, Pierre. America's favorite frat boy. America's favorite frat boy, uh, Josh Coleman. Josh Coleman's in the house. Holmes Josh, are you, are you going to uh, Grand Slam? Dude, I'm going to tell you, he's, he's such a like wimp now. He's away. such a wimp now. He doesn't come <laughs> up anymore. He has like a whole life. He's like, he's like oh, I want to come. And then he never shows up. Typical Josh, frat hey. boy, Josh. Typical flaky frat boy, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> uh people just show up into the chat and get roasted it's great um he wants to come to comic-con we... yo do comic-con man i'll be there all four days <sighs> yuck get press josh see if you can get see if you can convince andrew to give you press passes it's i i gave him I, he has an email address i gave him i said sign up for the press passes because i'm not going he i we get him every year i used to give him to olivia from press what do we got here? All right, what else do we the, have? The nerd guru says his question was. What not was it? What was his answer? What was his question? We need to answer that question. He did do a super chat. Um, he did. MG, MG, can you pop that? You up? spent. Yeah, you spent. Uh, I can just tell you what it was. Yeah. It was about Sasha Banks at uh, Boston. You guys went into your uh, twenty minutes of whatever that. Was. <laughs> whatever that. Oh was. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, Sasha Banks in Boston. I would love to see Sasha B- Banks in Boston. It's part because um, Survivor Series is there. Is what he's asking. Mm. That's right. Yeah. You know, listen, MG. Don't tell us what we did wrong. Just tell us how we could be better. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna take a long time <laughs> i think uh i do think sasha right well sasha and naomi have to come in together but I everything know, that man. they're doing is together right all those all those appearances are all together so they they're working on something like it, you know like rich and i we're 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 very close right but rich yeah. are we gonna write are we going to events together I mean, on occasion, but also, you know, we, are, we have been filming ourselves <laughs> doing stretching videos like Sasha and Naomi. Oh, yeah, we got the like, same video. <laughs> same guy, same, same guy same in everything. Studio. Yeah. Both of us just stretching, man, stretching. <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing weird about it. I don't know why people were like, like freaking out over that video. You need to get a good stretching. Yeah, I got to get that good stretch. But you know what we do differently? We go for a nice schwitz afterwards. Nice schwitz. Oh, you have question. to go for a nice schwitz afterwards. Um, War Games in Boston. I could use a nice Schwitz. When's yeah, the last time you went for a nice Schwitz? Oh, I couldn't tell you, man. It must have been like uh, a couple of years ago. Did they beat you? Pre- you, did, you did that one? 
I don't go in for those. I don't go in for the Russian bathhouses with the eucalyptus beating. Why? Why? Like, I don't want to be touched. I, it makes me uncomfortable. You know, my my uh, my bathroom turns into a sauna. Yeah, because I got the special vents, so I could steam that place out if I wanted to. Very nice. Yeah. How hot does it get? Very, very. See, I, I like to get. Oh, you know what? Uh, and then I go went, right in the tub. We went. I I should say it was pretty recently. We went on a trip to Maine, and the place we were staying had a Schwitz, and like the Airbnb nice. had one, had a I steam want, room, and so it was dope. I'm considering it to be honest. I want to get a uh, an infrared. Uh, 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 st- I was going to say bathhouse. I'm not buying a bathhouse. Like house. an RFID reader yeah, so you can no, scan people's credit cards? No, no. Like the, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the steam rooms, right? But you could get one, like an outdoor one. I want to put in that corner yeah. outside. Oh, very nice. I could come out like the I fly. Want. Yeah, <laughs> I'll come out like the fly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What else do we have? Yeah, I, I, I think Sasha should show up. I think that's a big moment in Boston. Boston's going to be, I mean, they're sold out. That show sold so easily, so quickly. So, Obviously, Survivor Series, which is never considered a big pay per view, right? I mean, this is something Rich and I have spoken about for years. No. Survivor Series lost, you know, lost that ability, lost it, its luster. Well, you remember the, the whole concept was you were going to see people teaming up that have never teamed up before, and you're going to see people facing off that have never faced off before. Mm-hmm. But everybody faces off against everybody. Faces face fight each other. Heels fight each other. There's no, there's no, uh, you, there's no gatekeeping anymore with like right. how the baby faces behave. So. That original concept's out the window. I think war, if you turn Survivor Series into a War Games pay per view, I, I that would be. Uh, I mean, you you just reinvigorated the pay per view for the next five years at least. Yeah, for sure. I think I think this has to have a good showing for the future, right? For the future of that event. Yeah. Now I want. You got to do cool shit with Survivor Series. Yeah, man. Me too. Uh, <laughs> there's there's a, there's a large populate large segment of our population saying, "What the hell's a Schwitz?" It's a steam. You get a nice steam. Uh, you know, you go get a nice workout in. Go for a swim. Get a nice steam on. Get all the get all the poison out of your body. Get all the poisons out of your body, so you can put more poison back in it. Yeah. Do you know what Deacon did? Deacon's showing my kids videos now when he comes uh, by, and he's like, well, "Check this video," and he shows them Tim and Eric bits, and one that of they them don't is, get that they <laughs> don't get, and it's just one that these these children are chanting, "All the food is poison. All the food." And my kids sing this now. You're great. They're like an celery, apples, carrots too. They're all poison, and then they just keep singing about all the food is poison. <laughs> what an influencer! What an influencer, <laughs> Deacon. Uh, let's, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is from uh, Colonel Stutters with the great new name. look photo. With the new look photos of Brody King after Malachi has now left AEW, is Brody King's AEW's version of the Boogeyman? Oh, dude, I haven't seen this. Have you? He looks gnarly. He also cut a promo. Uh, on Sting and Darby saying like just because you cut the head off the snake doesn't mean that everything dies, you know. Where 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 is he now? Let's see. They're still doing House of Black stuff. You know what? Like oh, I wish this? I wish Malachi the best. I think that dude's gonna come back stronger than ever if he decides to come back. He needs a rest. Yeah, listen, Malachi is very talented. Very, very talented. Oh yeah, now I see him. Ooh. Oh, he's like a shaman. Yeah, he looks gnarly, dude. With the tattoos and everything. Yeah, yeah, he looks gnarly. All right, we'll see what they do with this. I love spooky gimmicks. So mm. there is a photo. Fo- oh, this is cool. All right, I'm into this. I'm cool with this. Uh, let's see here. We got one from Large23. Is the deal being worked out with WWE and Hulu? So this is actually very interesting. The next day, and this is something we didn't talk about because it's a very loosey-goosey show. Um, it expires on Saturday. That deal. If you're if you're NBCU, if you're Peacock, I know that Comcast has a piece of Hulu, right? I think they own like thirty percent. Mm. But why the f would you not have the next day Raw on Peacock? Now the big question is what happens to what happens to SmackDown, right? Where does SmackDown go? For next day rights. Yeah. If you're not on Hulu, do you put it on Peacock? I, th- there's, that is a question that I have asked multiple people, and nobody can answer me the, answer that question to me. Uh, if, okay, fine. If they are not on Hulu for next day rights, next day broadcast. Right, right. 
okay, bro. Where are you putting SmackDown? Because I, I don't think it's going to end up on, on Peacock. Yeah, it seems like there's going to be a lot of stuff going on, right? Between like a lot of merging of, of, of different companies. And I say this all the time. Where is the next day for AEW? Right. If I don't DVR AEW, right? If I'm an AEW fan and I don't DVR, I don't have a DVR. I just watch it live. Maybe I watch it on, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. on the TBS app. Where is the next day streaming? Right. You know where? Nowhere. Yeah. I think Fight has it in the UK, like outside of North America, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Isn't that insane that you it's... have a national product that is considered, I don't know, the number one or number two or number three product of the night every single week in its time slot, and you don't have any way to watch it the following day for the masses? Preposterous. It is preposterous. No, it really is preposterous. I, you know, this is, uh, TV's weird. Sometimes you don't get a good deal. I think that's a really bad deal that Tony has. Not that he got a bad deal. I think that it just, things didn't fall in place. Mergers, pandemics. Now we have that other, other conversation about NBCU being interested in purchasing Discovery Warner Brothers. Very interesting. And I would say if that ever happens, if that were to happen, I, I think the days of AEW on, on that property are gone. Okay, I, 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 the WWE influence over NBC Universal is, is very deep. Their relationship is very deep. Why would you want this other product then? I guess to fill time. I guess to fill a station. You could. Very fascinating. I, I, I think this is all very interesting stuff. You know, maybe, maybe they do stay. Maybe there is some sort of harmonious relationship you could have with the two. But that would be cool. And then what happened? Like, let's let's go into this scenario. Let's say NBC buys WWE or whatever you want to call it, right? Because it's public. They buy them out. They buy the shares. They absorb them, whatever. I'm not saying it's happening. I have no idea if that'll happen. But let's yeah. say they do. And then now they also purchase Discovery Warner Brothers. Do what, what do you do with AEW? Nothing. Why would you? Right. Well, there is the TNT app, which is not that great. The TNT TBS nope. app. But it's... Uh, you're talking about next day? Like I'm not sure do. if it's next day to be honest, because like no, I it's tried, not. I've tried, I've tried to use it a few times and just got completely frustrated with it because it kept crashing. Aren't they available on TBS TNT app on Friday slash Saturday? I I don't think so because I've looked up I I looked a couple times before and I couldn't I couldn't get and you know what nobody has the answer here right in the chat room and that says right. something too and these are these are the most hardcore exactly. of fans exactly. Uh, let's see. So I will say that, yeah, I will say it's on demand on, I get it through my Xfinity through Comcast. I get it all on demand. So that, and that way you can, I just sent you a screenshot. Yeah, but, on, yeah, but on demand wouldn't be on demand on, on demand is inconsistent because it's not on every, it's not on every provider. It's not updated the same date right. as everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, and that makes a big difference when you're looking at ratings and you're doing DVR plus three, or you're doing, you know, same day viewership plus seven. All those things come into account. Here's a comment from Ajmandi in the in the Twitch chat. In the Middle East, for twelve dollars a month, we get Dynamite, Rampage, all AEW pay per views, the Italian Soccer League, live and unlimited views on demand, all on Stars Play. Yeah, they have. I mean, they have they have very different setups for international deals. I just find it fascinating in the U.S. that it's not a. Uh... Listen, I, I, the big question here is what happens with HBO. Right? Why is this property not on HBO? I'd be very upset if we lose HBO Max. Well, well HBO Max is changing names. Have you, you know noticed why? that? Have you noticed that all the streaming interfaces, um, apart from Peacock, which was already terrible to begin with, have changed to and Netflix have changed to kind of garbage? Oh, they're all terrible now. Yeah. Did you see what The Verge did with their website? No, I didn't. Uh, abysmal. It's abysmal. This is what happens when you listen to the wrong people. All right. What oh, else? Do we have? Let's do a couple more questions. Yeah, it's terrible to verge. A couple more cues. All right. Let's see what we got here. HBO Max was the chosen one. That's from uh, ICU in yeah. the chat. Uh, let's see. Mr. Gonzo, throw some, uh, throw some more questions in the queue. We'll do like two more. Yeah, guys. Uh, submit a couple more questions. We're going to do two more and then get out of here. Thank you for 
listening. Um, and again, if you see us at Grand Slam tomorrow, please say hi. Yes, and I'm I'm doing we're live, pal. Uh, I'm gonna record we're live, pal, early today with Garrett. I don't know if we're going live or not. Uh, <laughs> so it should be called we're live, pal. Parentheses, not today. Not today. Uh, because he we have a we have a conflict in time. Can you try to do the same show that we just did with Garrett? Try to make Garrett talk about Goodfellas and uh, Casino. I do. You know what? Garrett hangs, man. I gotta say he hangs, but I want to. But he'll have a very different perspective. He's from California. Uh. Okay. You ready? Yeah. This is from Louis Lamberti. Any update on the Ring of Honor getting a TV deal? What a nice picture of Louis. Louis. Yeah. Right? What a nice yeah. picture. It's not crazy. It's a nice picture. It's not insane. There's no uh there's no you know blood on his photo. There's no crazy <laughs> uh, uh uh logo. You know? Just a nice The no blood is a plus. Nice <laughs> photo. We um, do get a, we have a lot of bleeding avatars. Yeah, here. like there's a ton of bleeding avatars. There's this fonts that bleed. There's 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 cartoons that are bleeding. There's people that are bleeding. Just I don't know what's wrong with you guys. There's a lot of blood. Uh, any update on Ring of Honor getting a TV deal? I know that Tony's working on it, and uh, you know it's very difficult to get a freaking TV deal when you have a network that just merged with another company and they're chopping everything. And you have new people. It, you know, it's just delayed now. This merger delayed a lot. I hope so. Because that they need a TV show for that. And if Jericho becomes their champion, you 100% need a TV show. Straight Maybe that's part up. of the announcement. Maybe they announce it. Oh, here's a good one to close out on. Yeah. This is from Colonel Stutters again on Twitch. How would you guys place the title matches for tomorrow? Opener, middle, and oh, closer. Great question. Okay. That's a great question because I know Rich and I love to do this. But don't forget do this. about don't forget about the ladies match. Okay, so I would open. It's, it's all title matches tomorrow, by the way. It's all title matches. I would open with Jericho and Claudio. Boom. Okay. I would. Or no, you know what? I would open with the acclaim. Okay. I would go into the women's match. I would go into Jericho and Claudio, then do Pack and Orange Cassidy, and then I would go into the main event. I would open with the women's match. Okay. Right? I would do Pack versus Orange after that. Remember, you, you just you just shit all over the quarter though. Then I'm not concerned with numbers, Andrew. See, I am. <laughs> then Claudio and Jericho. Okay. That's your Tag third match. match. Claudio and Jericho is your third. Tag match. Okay. Uh, a something a bit in between the tag and the main and then the main. Okay. So you did more of like a New Japan type booking. You went very heavy on the second half. But build, like build it up. You know, yeah. like I, I was originally going to say start out with the pack and Orange Cassidy match. But I think starting with the ladies match. Would already get the crowd going. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious. And then co co main event, tag match, and main event, main event. But there needs to be something in between there. Got it. And I'm sure they'll have backstage stuff too. Yeah. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. Andrew Zarian is shitting on the departed heat and Al Pacino right now. This is a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you get a lot of booze from the internet oh, on that. All I do is watch Goodfellas on repeat constantly. And SVU. Tons all of day. SVU. All day all SVU. Day. Ice all tea. If, what, do you, what do you prefer to have on in the background during the day? Um, what do I have on? I, I, I tend to put on a lot of wrestling, but I also put on a lot of... Um, so, like, I'm really into All Tomorrows, that weirdo alien thing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So I, I, I listen to, like, right now, there's another one. It's like Man After Man. There's, like, another book that I'm, like, listening to, and it's about humanity after the collapse of man. Uh-huh. So I'm listening to that. Uh, I put on, I never put on the news. I don't want to see the news. Yeah, no, no, thanks. Uh, I just, You're you know what news. I do? I, I like to put on, like, right now, I'm deep into Game of Thrones. 
deep, okay. deep, deep into it. So I watch a lot of videos on like side characters. Okay. Like Duncan okay. Egg. That would be like uh, your your background noise while you're doing work. Yeah, that's my background noise. Okay. So like, like they'll be like, I'll, I'm, I'm very deep into that right now. So like I'll have that on. Or like I'll have like a video of someone like explaining an episode of The Sopranos. I like the, the commentary yes. videos. Very into Yeah, yeah. Yeah, same here. I'll throw, I'll do Sopranos. Like I'll just hit, hit play and then just like let it play. Uh, Seinfeld is on a lot on TBS and Comedy Central now. So like I'll, I'll leave that on. Uh, Ancient Aliens, whenever it's on, that shit's Tons, on all yeah. day. And Love that, that irritates, stuff. irritates the shit out of my wife. I uh, found, I found the wackiest, uh, wackiest YouTube channel. And it's like very crazy. It's like these people believe in Stargates. Oh, yeah. And I love that stuff. It's very yeah. wacky. Yeah, same here. When are we doing um, Alien Men? <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, we should do Alien Men. And, you know, th there's another thing. I forgot the name of it. I got. I think I've sent you the videos of that wacko that claims that he was, like, in a military project and he would just, like, oh, yeah. assassinate aliens on other planets. The Those dude guys? Who, 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 like, they sent him to Mars. And yes, to the that's the one. Bunker, that guy? Yeah, 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 that guy. Yeah, he's he's been fighting, but, like, he's also so here. Good. He, his avatar is, is it's an avatar concept, right? His avatar is yeah. there, but he's physically here also very into this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's bananas too. Like I love it. Cause I love it. Well, the ancient alien stuff I love because one, it's very historically rich in terms of like geography and structures and human history. But then they do the swerve on you where they're like, but ancient alien theorists say, guess what? It's aliens. Dude, I love that. But, but ancient alien theorists believe another way. Can you somehow swerve Giorgio Sukolos into coming on Mat Men and just have him talk about wrestling? <laughs> oh, man. I, be I bet you Giorgio Sukolos loves uh, wrestling. Yeah. Oh, we could probably get Von Daniken on, on here. <laughs> just like a weird... Like... Eric Von Daniken, Chariots of the yeah. Gods, 100%. Absolutely. I have that Absolutely. book in my... I still... I have that book. My mother had that book. Yeah, hold on. Y you know what? Since we're doing wacky stuff, let me show you what I got. You know, hold, okay, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I actually have my copy. It's not within arm's reach, but it's back there. I'm going to show you my wacky alien shit. Please, please do. And then we'll wrap it up. All right. You guys are getting a little yeah. bonus here. Oh, these books are great. I used to take these out of the library when I was, when I was younger. Guys, you're getting such a bonus right now. You're getting that alien bonus. You guys are getting that an alien bonus. You're getting that extraterrestrial shit right. right now. Okay. What do you think of this? Mysteries of the human body. Amazing. Okay. How about. Time Life presents Psychic Voyages. Boom. Okay. Also, Mysteries of the Unknown, a Time Life collection, Psychic Powers. Amazing. My favorite of all of them, the UFO phenomenon. Yeah, I love it. Those and covers. of course, Those... my, my complete sightings book of aliens. I they're, got, this, they're so I got nuts. this for my birthday. Somebody gave this to me on my birthday years ago. I love alien shit. I'm telling you, like if if I wasn't doing wrestling stuff, I would I would definitely do an alien talk show. I would talk you about mean, aliens, how they're real, they're here, abductions. I want to interview all the wackos that get abducted. You'd be hanging out with Tom DeLonge from three from uh, Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, he's a big alien guy. Huge, um, huge alien dude. Wh who would win in a hair versus hair battle royal? You or Yorgo Sukolos? Oh, I would. My my hair is way better. Mine is uh -huh. also uh, artificial from all the Propecia. <laughs> I can grow it on command. I just like, listen, I just like, I just grew listen, my hair. Stop taking those pills. Uh, you saw, you saw those messages I got? I saw those messages. Yeah. How crazy is that? Nobody believes me. These anti-finasteride no, people are after me. <laughs> this guy calls uh, me a Merc agent. He refers to me as a Merc agent. He tells me that you, I work for Merc. You're working for the deep state, dude. Uh, oh, here's, here's, I don't care. One final question from poppy mm -hmm. squeeze andrew before you go what is your favorite episode of the sopranos mine is when they get lost in the woods i think pine he's referring to pine barons yep the greatest episode of all time i love that one uh i i, I like at all of them when it's like a comedy which it is yeah. it's a oh, hysterical yeah. show san janeiro i think was this past weekend that's a san janeiro episode is another good one that is another Paulie, good one i think where paulie finds out he's uh He's not his mother's <sighs> child. Yes. Yeah. The aunt was the mother. Right. Very interesting. So Love good. it. Love it. These are Andrew's coffee table books. Yes. These are my coffee table books. They all Andrew, are you going to watch Law and Order crossover on Thursday night on NBC? I didn't even know there was a crossover. All right. I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. All right. All right, guys.
Love each and every one of you. We'll be back probably Friday with another yeah. episode. We'll talk about the pay-per-view. We'll talk about the show and everything. But if you are at Arthur Ashe, Rich is going to be there. I'm going to be there. Say hello to us. Yeah, say hi. Say hi. Say hi. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Love you.